What's up guys, this is Justin here. Welcome to the video on how income taxes work in the Philippines for both expats and for locals for income derived inside the country or outside the country. This is a pretty complicated issue and topic even in the United States and in the Philippines, it's really no different. I've actually had to consult with more than one accountant and also individuals who worked at the BIR in order to understand actually how things actually work here. And there's a couple of reasons. One, because I actually made some money here as a result of a 1% referral commission agreement that has yet to be paid out for a real estate uh, sale. And in the future, hopefully that gets paid out. And I learned that I basically need to pay taxes, of course, locally to the Bureau of Internal Revenue here, the BIR, uh, similar to the United States' IRS, which is interesting. So for one thing, I consulted Chat, GPT, and Google, and also finally got a direct answer from an offshore uh, tax accountant that I paid about $70 for about 30 minutes of their time to finally answer just one simple question. If you're an expat and you stay in the Philippines longer than 183 days, you become considered what's called a resident alien. It means you're basically a resident for tax purposes because you've been living here more than six months a year. But there's a territorial tax system here, which means you're not basically taxed on foreign derived income sources. So I originally thought, according to Google and ChatGPT, ha ha ha, uh, that you have to pay taxes to the Philippines government technically if you are considered a resident alien, because that's what a lot of the language reads on Google. So here's the answer. You don't have to. If your income is basically derived from outside of the Philippines on those sources of income, you do not need to pay income taxes, even if you are marked as a resident alien living here for 183 calendar days or more per year, which is more than half the year because it's a territorial based tax system and not a residence based tax system. So let's dive into how income taxes actually work. We'll do some examples. I've got my handy little iPad here as a reference for side note we'll do some fast facts we'll do a computation example and all the forms you need to file if you want to create a business in the philippines and we're going to use this example as a proprietor business not a, a corporation business but there are some similarities between filing for a corporation in the philippines versus a proprietor or professional so i've recently had to do a lot of this legwork because my girlfriend has a successful business here and i've had to figure out and navigate what the best choices were going to be for us so i'm going to basically break you down through every single thing that I learned and I really hope that it's going to help you quickly streamline through the process in case you find yourself in a similar spot or situation where you would need to do something like this for yourself. So the first major point to understand is if you are a professional or proprietor here in the Philippines doing business locally, you have two different types of tax systems you can actually do. So the first one is you can do graduated income tax rates, and I'll show you what the table looks like right here. And you're obviously not taxed on the first 250,000 pesos, as you can see here. And the graduated is based off of your profits. It's based not off of your receipts. It's based off of your profits for your business. Okay. And you're not taxed on the first 250,000 pesos. So it's pretty clear and straightforward is very similar to the USA. There is one other thing to think about after the 250,000 pesos, once you get above that, in addition to the graduated tax rate, you have to pay what's called a 3% uh, business percentage tax on your gross receipts. And that amount gets added also to the graduated, uh, basically tax table rates that you see here for the first option. The second option is you can do what's called an 8% flat tax on your gross receipts, which is where you pay nothing but 8% flat tax on your gross receipts, not including the 200 the first 250,000 pesos, which you don't have to pay any 8% flat tax on that. So if you're, for example, a grab writer and you're making less than 3 million pesos per year, you could do the 8% flat tax option because your cost of doing business is low. So why would you want to do one versus the other? Well, if your profit margins are only like 20%, so if you only like net 200,000 pesos per 1 million gross receipts, you would definitely want to do the graduated tax rates. And that's because you would only want to get taxed on your profits. But if you have a very low operating cost for your business, let's say you're a doctor or something and you, you do basically you do checkups and collect 1500 pesos for a checkup as a doctor or a service-based business or your grab driver or something. And let's say your uh, cost of doing business is like 10 to 20% of your gross receipts. So you're basically operating at an 80 or 90% profit margin. It makes a lot more sense to just pay 8% flat tax on your gross receipts. Now you can only do the 8% gross receipts tax option flat rate if you're making 3 million less than 3 million pesos a year. The moment you're making more than 3 million pesos a year, you basically have to switch over to the graduated tax rates. And when you're over 3 million pesos per year per calendar year for your total gross receipts, not only do you have to uh, pay those graduated tax rates and not the 8%, you no longer have to pay the 3% per business percentage tax, but you have to actually have your customers pay a 12% VAT value added tax. And your customers basically pay this extra 12% 
percent and it goes right on the transaction amount that the customers pay so if you sell an item for 100 pesos basically you have to add 12 pesos to that collect the additional 12 pesos and then remit or pay that to the bureau of internal revenue the bir here in the philippines you have to pay those vat taxes and you only basically start paying those vat taxes if during the calendar year you surpass 3 million pesos so if you surpass 3 million pesos in revenue for the current calendar year that you're operating in at that point you start collecting it because obviously if you look like you're going to pass 3 million but you don't know yet and you start collecting the vat tax and then you don't end up making 3 million pesos for that calendar year you collected it for basically no reason and uh, you basically have to just end up paying a three percent business tax so where or when do you actually choose what type of tax you're going to basically do so when you go to file your annual tax return and for a proprietor and or a professional it'll be a 1701a form a stands for annual 1701a as an annual you also are obligated to do the 1701q as in quarterly forms and i'll break down all the other form requirements at the end of this video for a proprietor or a professional there's probably four to five forms you need to be aware of uh, from registering your business to get your tid to doing the quarterly annual etc percentage tax all that stuff will break down towards the end of this video if you're a nerd and you really want to know how this stuff works like me so something incredible i haven't told you yet and i'm about to tell you right now is there's something called the optional standard deduction basically which means and there's no limit to the amount of gross receipts you can, you can declare this on whether you make you know 400,000 pesos for the tax year or 400 million tax uh, you know gross receipts for the tax year you can do what's called the operating standard deduction and this only applies to the graduated income tax table type okay so it's really good so basically you get automatically a 40 percent complete deduction across your receipts so let's say for example you make a million in gross receipts for that particular calendar year and you want to and you let's say you have a very high operating margin of like 90 percent just as an example then you would have to do the math to compare what's better for you to save more taxes the eight percent flat tax or this graduated tax option with the 40 percent optional standard deduction which applies to all graduated rates for proprietors and professionals so back to the example if you make a million a year in pesos uh you only get taxed on six hundred thousand of that and you also don't have to pay tax on the first 250. so you're really only getting taxed on a like you know a very small amount of your income like 50 percent or something so if you're operating at a net profit margin of at least 60 percent it makes sense to just take the optional standard deduction because then you don't have to worry about saving all your receipts uh saving all your invoices and a lot of the suppliers or vendors or merchants that you might be doing business with based off of your line of business might not be registered registered with the BIR and therefore they're not going to be able to give you BIR registered invoices and receipts that you would be able to compile and keep in order to track what your actual net profit actually is in case it was less than 60% and you didn't want to do this option because you don't have to do the, the optional standard deduction with the graduated income tax table type if you're operating that margin you know for sure is like way less than 60% it's like 20 30% in that case you would want to keep track of all of your receipts all of your invoices from suppliers and customers etc and you'd have to worry about all of that and be super organized or if you can just maintain a 60 percent profit margin you don't have to do any of that you don't have to worry about invoices you don't have to worry about receipts you only need to know what your gross receipts are your total revenue is then one more thing worth adding is when you go to file the forms uh, any returns or refunds are basically deducted from your gross receipts number so returns or refunds you do not have to pay income taxes on those that's just something worth uh, mentioning as well okay so here's some rapid fast facts for you to get you super smart and super educated when it comes to the income taxes rules and laws for the philippines so let's do it. So the first 250,000 of revenue for both percentage tax and for profit from graduated tax, of course, is not taxable as we discussed. And it with the 8% tax type flat rate, it's also the first 250K is not applicable. And so the second one, let's take a look. You must file your annual tax return even if you made less than 250,000 pesos for that current year, you still have to file. So when you go to file your 1701A annual tax form, like I mentioned before, you indicate whether you're going to do the 8% flat tax or you indicate whether you're going to do the graduated uh, tax type table basically with the optional standard deduction of 40 percent along with the three percent business tax so basically that is what you are declaring when you file the form and then you do and calculate the numbers based off of whichever uh, option you choose and also if you're going to choose the option where you have your own receipts your own invoices to prove that you are at operating at a net margin way less than 60 percent then you would just specify that you're doing the graduated tax type and you're not doing the optional 
traditional standard deduction. Instead, rather, you're basing your income tax liability off of the actual profit provable by your specific financial statements, which would be your orders, revenues, anything related to your gross income and anything related to your gross expenses. So if it makes more financial sense for you, if you think that there's a good chance you might make less than 3 million pesos for the calendar year, you can plan on doing the 8% flat tax on your gross receipts if that is the most beneficial option for you. But if you if it looks like you're going to go above 3 million pesos for that particular calendar year, you're going to have you can just prepare yourself to automatically pivot to the other type of tax, which would be the graduated tax rates plus the percentage tax plus actually if you're going to get above 3 million, then you don't have to worry about percentage tax, but you then you do have to pay the 12% VAT tax, you have to start paying that after you surpass the 3 million in sales. So obviously if you pass 3 million pesos in sales for the current calendar year, then you obviously have to fill out a separate type of paperwork or registration form to file for the VAT. And you can directly work with someone from upwork.com. There's a lot of great Filipino, Filipina accountants there that can walk you through that process as well. Okay, so on the screen right here, we're gonna look at an example of a computation for a proprietor type business. And I'm gonna walk you through how we got to the math and the effective tax rates. and. Again, this is super nerdy, but it's great to know how things actually work here in the Philippines. So here's the example. So in this particular business, the gross sales were 4.5 million. So the first thing we do is we multiply that by 0.4, as in 40% to get a deduction of 1.8 million uh, plus the 25,000 pesos above the 1.8. And then that leaves us with a net taxable income of 2.7 million and some change. Going with the graduated tax uh, rates, the taxes on the first 2 million pesos are gonna be 402,500 plus 30% above 2 million based off of again the tax table rates that uh, I, uh, we can put right here in the side so you can see and then so the total tax due on the 4.5 million is going to be 623,000 as well so the effective tax rate for the revenue uh, the tax rate on the revenue is 13.67 percent assuming that this business is operating at a 60 percent profit margin with 40 percent expense assuming that that's the scenario then the effective tax rate on the profit is only 22.78 percent which is not bad and then the VAT taxes that would be collected on this would be uh, 547,500 pesos, which is 12% extra you add to your transactional cost that the customer pays. And then you remit that to the BIR. So that is just a computational example to let you know how the graduated rates work when you're above 3 million pesos. And when you're below 3 million pesos, the VAT taxes are not part of the process, but instead you substitute a 3% business percentage tax that gets aggregated at 0.03 times your, your entire gross receipt. And one last thing you might be wondering is the 0.03 business percentage tax basically is that multiplied before or after the optional standard deduction? If I had to guess, you can verify with an accountant, I would say you do the deduction first, the 40% operating standard deduction, and then yeah, that the newer, lower number is what you probably multiply the 0.03% business tax on. Okay, so here are all of the forms you would need to file as a proprietor or professional doing business locally here in the Philippines. So BIR form number 230. This is going to be the form that you use to register your entity, to register the fact that you are a business owner and you will get your TIN, which stands for tax identification number, and you indicate your line of business, etc. So the next form is BIR form 1701A. This is the annual form. It's due April 15th of the following calendar year. The next form is BIR form number 1701Q is in quarterly, and these are due on May 15th, August 15th, and November 15th of the current year. Form number Number four, 0605. So this form is basically a 500 pesos annual fee that you have to pay every current year between the days January 1st and January 31st. If every current year you just have to remit or pay that 500 peso annual registration fee, basically it goes along with uh, the fact that you're just a business owner. Last but not least, BIR form 2551Q. That's the quarterly percentage tax form. And those are due in the current year on April 5th, July. 5th and October 5th and you only have to remit this form if you believe your sales are not going to be greater than 3 million pesos for the current calendar year okay and then if you get involved with the VAT tax registration stuff uh, just contact an accountant to discover what forms are going to be needed and necessary and when to file those for remitting those to the BIR okay this has been Justin Spencer I hope you got a lot of value out of this video I hope I was able to instruct you and educate you and guide you and help you understand a little bit better how things work here in the Philippines when it comes to the taxation laws on income. And yeah, if you liked the video, click the like button and please consider subscribing if you want to for more content from me. Have a great day and bye for now. There's many ways to be happy.